Hi all. We're going to do some more PowerShell. Uh, before we get started, I heard we're supposed to be more entertaining here on YouTube, so I got this book at the library. It's a world's book of best jokes. It's a real old book, 1943. Here, a robust woman who had lost her thumb in a trolley accident consulted her lawyer lawyer but why do you think your thumb was worth twenty thousand dollars woman because it was the thumb i kept my husband under <laughs> okay so uh first powershell video we went over the basics and uh, we stopped at uh, number 10 here, if we can find it. Okay, we, okay, we stopped here. So we'll start with this guy here. We'll start up PowerShell, go down to Windows, PowerShell, right click on the top one here PowerShell run as administrator get the user account control starts up PowerShell and I'm just going to CD back two folders so now we're at C colon then I'm gonna clear the screen So here we're going to go get process and uh, we're still just getting our feet wet. Get process, that's just the processes running on your computer. If you go to your taskbar, task manager, uh, on the processes tab here, these are the processes running on your computer. like in here somewhere is PowerShell here so PowerShell has the ID on the details tab it shows us the processes and the process ID number that's that's this one here <clears throat> if we start up notepad see how we started up notepad from PowerShell now if we go back to our process list notepad should be on here like right here is notepad I have two of them open one's in our PowerShell list and one is the blank one here so I'm presuming the newest one is 5848 is the ID number if we come here Says 5848, and that should close this guy here. Okay, there's one called Git Event Log, and we're going to say Git the Event Log called Application. If you go to your computer here, manage, you have these event logs here. OK. 
Come on. You've got all these guys here. You got that one, that one, and that one. Okay. <clears throat> so we go get get event log. And you can see here we can add items to the add items to the commandlets. We're saying use the commandlet called get event log. And then go get the log named application. So every command that you run is going to have different items that you can add here. You can see there's quite a few of them. Yeah, so hold control, hit C to quit the list. Okay, there's one called set alias. You can create your own alias. See here, it's saying commandlet set alias at the command pipe position one. Supply values for the following parameters name. It wants to know what you want to name your alias. So I'll say I want to name my alias L. And it says, okay, what what commandlet do you want to set to that? I'll, I'll, I'll go clear host. Hit enter. Okay, so now when I type L, hit enter. So L is just a alias to clear host. If we wanted to, we could do that all in one command. So set alias the character L to clear host. That's just something that I like to do. I just hit L, hit enter, and it clears the screen. Uh, there's something called git help. I got this at the bottom of the screen of the of this section here. Get help on set alias. See that didn't it, it really didn't work because help's not installed. It's given us some basic stuff here. You know, set set alias it already has an alias called sal but here it says git help cannot find the help file you know we haven't installed help yet yeah. they have a real m minimal help installed but what you have to do is run update help to get the full help so we'll we'll do that at the end of this tutorial so uh, there's something called git history these are just the commands that we've ran uh, every time you turn off PowerShell this list will go away see if we close this then start it back up And if I run git history again, there's nothing there. So to remove an alias, it's kind of odd. You have to use a re remove item. Remove item alias colon one. So now if we type L, our alias is gone. I can recreate it here. That's just something that I like to do. It just makes it easier to clear the screen. And here's our git 
get history again just to show you that we do have a history there and you can scroll through that with uh, your arrow keys can clear history by the ID number so let's say I want to clear number 11 here I can say clear history number 11 and now the 11 has gone Clear history, 9, 9 is gone, you can empty your recycle bin. You know, we can empty our trash here. Here it's saying, are you sure you want to? You can just, just hit the enter key. You don't have to bother with the Y. By default, it's gonna use yes. It, it, it's in yellow. So now you can see our trash is empty here. Uh, we can get the contents on our clipboard. I, I hope you know what I mean by a clipboard. See if if I go back here and I grab this text here and copy it. Name is now on our clipboard, right? If we come down here and paste it, you know, it's it's pasted into the text file because it was on our clipboard. So if we want to, we can use get clipboard to get the contents of the clipboard. We had that text there. These are just a few silly examples, just to give you an idea of what a commandlet is. Uh, something that might be useful as you study this stuff, you might want to save the commands that you run. So that's a transcript. You can start a transcript and you can stop a transcript. So here I'm going to start transcript and I'm going to save it to a text file, just a plain notepad file called mytranscript.txt and I'm going to save it to the PS folder, PS for PowerShell. And I'm going to hit the enter key. Okay, now it's saying transcript started, output file is located here. Now any commands that I type in here, let's say I'll say git clipboard, and I'll say uh, clear recycle bit. Okay. Now if I go to that folder, PS folder. Here's our transcript. You see it starts off with some general stuff. 
when you started it and stuff like that. Here's the one command and it, and it returned this text. Here's the recycle bin command and it returned this text and that we said why. And then we can stop it. Okay, so transcript has been stopped. <coughs> okay, let's say we want to create another one. Let's say create another transcript file. Okay. And we'll run some different commands here. Let's say git process and we'll say uh, IP config IP config and then we'll say stop Now when we come back to that folder and open up our transcript, it wrote over the items we did earlier. See, it gave us some general stuff here. It, here's our PS. Here, here's our process commandlet. It wrote all these items to the file. And then here's our IP config. Wrote these items to the file. Okay. Now, what if we wanted to save this file, though? Well, we could rename this guy here, right? And just, just create another one by a different name. Or... We could say create another transcript file. Create another transcript file, but append to it. Add to it after all the other stuff. Okay, so now we're adding stuff to that file. So we'll say, uh, we'll say ping. now that one's not that one's not working Amazon has it turned off which is a good thing that's what you should do so. and then we can stop this, stop the transcript file. Then if we come back to that file, you can see we have our processes from the first time, IP config from the first time, and then it, it gave us this, this stuff again. And it said, here's our ping from Amazon timed out. Here's our ping on our local host. Here's the results from that. And then we stopped it. Okay, so that's how you create a transcript file. I thought that would be a good one. If you're trying to learn this stuff, you don't have to always take notes. You know, you can save it to a file and you have a record of what you ran through. Okay, now we'll go ahead and update the help. I'll show you again what I'm talking about here. If we go to uh, get help here, if 
see it, it doesn't show us nothing you know here I'm trying to get the longer version with the examples but it, it, it's not installed okay so if we just run git help on set alias we get a real simple thing but it's not the full version of help so we have to run we have to run uh, update help so this is just the update help commandlet so type that in and hit the enter key and my computer I think it takes about 15 minutes or so I, I've, I've got slow internet the slowest time warner so. so we'll see here it's about it's about 704 I think here Okay, it, that was faster than I thought, so that only took a minute. So now if we go set alias, you can see here we get a lot more back. So set alias creates or changes the alias name, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, something that's common you'll see in the books they'll show you how to run git help on git help you know show me how to use the help so you can see how that goes by pretty fast two or three screens right uh, that's where we can use a more so we'll do git help on git help Okay, show me the help. Show me how. Show me the information on, on how to use help. Okay, and then we'll use a pipe, and we'll pipe it to the more command. Okay, so here I'll show you. So now it just shows us the first screen. It stops at the top. That's the top of the help file here, and down here it's saying more. There's more to the help file that you can see. So you can read through all this stuff and then hit the enter key, move down one line at a time. Okay. Or let's see, get help. And then there's one examples. I use this one a lot show me the examples on how you would use this and here's the first screen there's more we could use the enter key too but if you type the space bar you'll move down a whole screen at a time instead of a line at a time space bar moves down a whole screen so there's the second screen third screen fourth screen so on you can see there's lots of examples if you were going to use the enter key on that one you'd be there all day trying to get down to the bottom if you just hold the enter key down too so there's example six uh, usually when you're in a shell you shouldn't scroll with the mouse because it messes things up you see how this is down here it's not uh, that more is usually down at the bottom of the screen, right? Usually a shell won't scroll right. That's why you use the CLS. It, it, it clears.
clears the shell. Usually with the shell you don't want to see this uh, scroll bar here. But it's a Microsoft GUI window type thing so it does what it's going to do. You know. Okay so here's just some examples. Get help on Git process and show me all the examples. So you can see that was pretty big. You know, it scrolled by pretty fast. You know. Here's all the examples. And uh, you could you could save that to a text file. See going. PowerShell name the file git process dot text so then we could come to our powershell folder and we have a text file that we can print out with all that information you know if you're working on something sometimes it's kind of hard to read the screen or you know, you have to go shopping with your wife or something. You got to go to work. You know, you can print it out, stick it in your pocket. You know. uh, here's a few more examples. This is the one that I usually use, but there's detailed, full, and then online. I've read that the online one is probably the most up-to-date because Microsoft updates that one as soon as they find problems. So, let's see here. Brings us to a web page. So let's compare it with our text file here. Get process, gets the processes running. Command. This one shows the aliases. Uh, the one, the one we, I think we ran the one with the examples, right? Let's see here. Yeah, the one we saved to our text file was the one with the example, so they won't be exactly the same. Uh, this looks like a few examples. One, two, three, four, five, six examples. I, I think I kind of like this text file one better. It seems like there's more text. Here, here let's uh, Ooh, that's pretty big. So you see that's definitely bigger than uh, the one on the one online So 
that uh, just glancing through it that definitely that looks a lot better that looks like a lot more than what's online so. Okay, and then to come back to the get alias one, it's basically the stuff that we just went over. Get help. See, when you first type this, it flies by the screen. You know, you get like four or five screens that fly right by you. So that's where the pipe comes into place. There's definitely a lot more that you can do with the pipe. That's just a real simple a real simple use of, of a pipe you know take the examples take take the results of this command and pipe it into the more command and then the more command shows you one page at a time one screen at a time okay so simple use of a pipe you know run this command here Get help on set alias commandlet with the examples switch. That dash examples, that's a switch. You can always add switches. It's just adding more features to the set alias commandlet. And then we take the results of this command and send it. The pipe just sends the results to the more command and the more command shows you the results one screen at a time press the enter key to move down one line at a time and space bar to move down one screen at a time and then okay so I think we'll stop there for now and third video we'll start with this stuff here okay see ya bye